What's up, guys? I'm Jacob Ross, uh, Long Island Lutheran, class of 2025. And I'm here with Light It Up Sports Podcast. Like, comment, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Light It Up Sports Podcast. Today we, here, we are here with class of 2025, Long Island Lutheran small forward Jacob Ross. He's gained some interest over the past few days since the 2025 contact period opened up. He also holds multiple Division One high major offers. But how's it going, Jacob? It's good. I'm going good. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. So let's start off with talking about your current high school, Long Island Lutheran, one of the best high school programs in the country, let alone New York. Um, kind of describe your relationship with the coaches at Long Island Lutheran. Um, I got a real close relationship with the coaches at Long Island Lutheran. They just really understand me and I really understand them and understand how they coach and how they how they get the best out of their players. Yeah. And what moments in particular stuck out to you, whether that's a specific game or a specific moment in a game that stuck out to you from your sophomore year? Um, a specific moment that stuck out to me during my sophomore year probably be just going to Geico Nationals. Yeah. Uh, first time in school history, so it was a big accomplishment. Yeah, and playing in New York, which has recently began to become a high school basketball hotbed, how do you feel your game has been able to develop playing against stronger competition? I feel like it helps a lot because night in and night out you have to bring your best and you can't you can't you can't relax on anything or else you're gonna you're just not gonna look good and yeah. you're not gonna play well. So mm-hmm. and you played a lot against a lot of great competition last year, as you guys said, you went to the Gakyo Nationals, but even in the regular season you guys played some great team teams um but who is the best player or players that you've had to guard or play against last year and what made them so difficult to guard or defend um probably uh cooper flag just because of yeah. how like versatile he is and mm-hmm. his size and how he can move yeah definitely he can basically play any position on the court really um and your brother Jaden is currently committed to UConn. He'll be playing there. He just graduated, I believe, or just finished up his senior season. Not a lot of guys can say that they've gotten a chance to play with, let alone their brother, but let alone their older brother, who is also committed to a high major D1 college. How was that for you? I mean, your sophomore year, getting to play alongside your brother, Jaden. Um, I, so I played with him my freshman year and, and my sophomore year. So yeah. just having someone to look up to, having like a role model there, even when times are tough, it's it's just good to have someone right there. Yeah. And he, he's been through the process, so Yeah, and that's kind of our next question. Like having an older brother who's been through the recruiting process, AU high school ball, talking to coaches and everything, how has that been able to help you almost understand it more or even just gain advice from that whole process? Um, it helps me like maneuver how to how to talk to coaches and yeah. how to just communicate with them and knowing what schools to pick and how to cut down your list. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about your recruitment with the 2025 contact period opening up recently. What was that feeling like for you when your phone kind of started to come in with different coaches from different universities talking to you on June 15th? Um, It was a good feeling because, you know, it just shows that your hard work is paying off. Mm-hmm. And no, no, no better feeling is that, so... Yeah, and everyone can see on Twitter the long list of schools that reached out to you. But what schools in particular have caught your eye when it comes to schools you might want to visit, even if they have not offered yet? Um, probably Notre Dame and uh, probably Ohio State. Ohio State, got you. And are there any schools growing up or even now that you would consider like a dream school or a dream school that you would like to receive an offer from? Um, honestly, not really, but if there were, it would be like any blue blood school, like a, yeah. like a Duke or a North Carolina. Kentucky, stuff like that. I got you. And the past few days, I know a lot of schools have been reaching out to you, but what schools have you been really talking to the most and communicating back and forth with the most? Maryland, um, UConn, gotcha. uh, Mississippi State, Ohio State. Awesome. 
Sounds good. So let's talk a little bit about Team Melo. That's where you're currently playing in the EYBL um, alongside guys like Kai and Anthony. But how was – or how has playing for Team Melo in the EYBL circuit expanded your recruitment and also helped you develop your game outside of play school ball? Um, it's, a, it's, it's a good experience. It's, you know, one of those things where it's also you playing the best comp- comp- competition. So yeah, it's playing against other guys that are good – if not look that better than, you know, it just puts a chip on your shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. And so a lot of times we like to ask guys who play EYBL or AAU basketball and high school basketball, what are some of the biggest differences that you've noticed between summer basketball and the EYBL or high school basketball? Um, High school basketball, it's, it's more of a college feel. I feel like, like you, everything's more like college prep. And yeah. I feel like, yeah. More UIBL, it's maybe. more it's more free. Yeah. yeah. I understand that. Yeah, a lot more plays, I would say, also in high school basketball, probably. Uh, a yeah. lot more sets and stuff like that. And with Carmelo Anthony being around the team a lot as he sponsors and endorses the team, how has it been for you to have a guy with that kind of pro experience to help you develop your game throughout the spring and summers? Um, It's, it's really helpful because, you know, Hall of, future Hall of Framer, just being able to – be a sponge and absorb the knowledge that he just gives to you. Yeah. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. And let's take a little bit last, last few questions here to kind of just break down your game in general. Um, When you're looking at your game, what separates you or what do you, what would you say separates you from other small forwards in your class of 2025? Just being able to be versatile, being able to guard one through five, mm-hmm. um, being able to dribble, being able to play different positions that yep. most, most players my size can't do. So Yeah. And the final question we have for you here, when you're looking at your current game and then you're looking in a few years, you're going to be playing in college, Um, what parts of your game now do you think will translate best to the collegiate level? Probably my, my, my defense. Definitely my yeah. defense. Just being able to guard everybody on the court. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, no, go ahead. Go ahead and finish. My bad. Yeah, I mean, and then offensively, probably like just my ability to to move off the ball and you know make plays for other guys. So yeah, awesome man. Well, Jacob, I appreciate you for coming on the show. Make sure you guys go all check out his socials below. They'll all be linked. Go drop them a follow. But I appreciate you for coming on the show, Jacob. All right, thank you, thank you.